Today, we're building a NAS PC that is way overpowered. Hey, I'm Jerry, and about every couple of years, I get the itch to build a new PC that I use for a NAS. And if you're unfamiliar, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage, which is basically a big hard drive that you connect to your network that other devices can connect to. There are a number of companies that sell pre-made NAS boxes of different sizes and form factors, and they're all really good. They usually have the ability to run different apps, so you can do more with the device than just store files like run a Plex media server or even a VPN. You can run virtual machines on many of them. For the last 14 months or so, I've been using a Synology Rackstation 1221 Plus, which is a rack-mounted NAS. I've had basically zero issues with it, and I like it a lot, but sometimes I just need a little bit more, like running bigger VMs or different software that I don't or can't run on my Macs. A Windows computer, will allow me to do much more than what a NAS can do. And don't get me wrong, NASs are great and absolutely worth it if you want a simple and usually cheaper solution that doesn't require a lot of maintenance. But mostly because I was bored and there's a few other things I want to do with this amount of storage, I'll be migrating back to a home-built PC. This will be used for storing my photos, YouTube project backups, backing up all the other computers in my house, running a few Docker containers, and probably a virtual machine or two using Hyper-V. Oh, and that Plex library I still needlessly maintain for those few Christmas shows that my wife watches once a year that she made me rip, I don't know, a decade and a half ago. So let's take a look at all of the parts for this overpowered build, and you can check them out in the description below. First up, the brains of the operation, which unfortunately is not me, but this is a Intel Core i5 11th gen, the i5-11400. This has integrated graphics. It's a six core processor with 12 threads, and I believe it runs at 2.6 gigahertz. This guy is definitely powerful enough to take care of whatever I'm gonna throw at it, and then some. So I should have no problem storing all my files and running the few applications and VMs that I need to. And we're just going to be using the stock fan with this build because I'm not gonna be doing anything crazy with this guy. So this is just going to be the stock fan that comes with the CPU. It's kind of a low profile design and should work just fine. For the motherboard, we have this ASRock Gaming CPU. I think that's how you pronounce it, ASRock, ASRock, I don't know. And going with the theme, this is overpowered for what I need. I don't know what necessarily makes it a gaming CPU, but it's got expansion ports for things that I need, like one we'll get to in just a moment. It's got integrated graphics ports like uh, HDMI and DisplayPort because I'm just going to be using an integrated graphics on the CPU. I'm not going to be adding a separate GPU. It's got four memory slots for up to 128 gigs of memory and M2 slots for my boot disk, which we'll get to in just a moment. The most important thing really was just having enough SATA ports built into the motherboard for the drives I'll be putting in to start. For memory, I'll be using this 32 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz Vengeance LPX memory. This is DDR4 memory. And really the only reason that I chose this is that the Vengeance memory is usually pretty decently priced and I've used that in a number of builds and never had any issues. For my boot drive, I'll be using this Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte PCI NVMe SSD. And going with the theme, this guy of course is way overpowered for just being a NAS, but it'll also help out with running local VMs and Docker containers and other things as well. So 500 gigabytes of space gives me the speed along with the storage to be able to do a number of different things with this box. For my primary storage, I'll be using these Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives, which work really well in an enclosure like this. I'll actually be taking my five six terabyte drives out of my NAS eventually, but to start my build and to start transferring information, I'll be using these two terabyte drives that I have. And because this is primarily a storage server for me, I have a 10 gigabit PCI card that I can use to transfer files as fast as possible between my primary computer and this NAS box. To power everything, I'll be using this Corsair RMX RM650X power supply. And this guy, again, is way overpowered for what I need. I'm just gonna be running a few hard drives, not any gaming PCs or water coolers or anything like that. But this guy is modular, so I can choose to install just the power connectors that I need and leave the others disconnected. But one of the primary reasons I chose this guy is that I want this box to be as quiet as possible, unassuming as possible. I don't wanna mess with it, I don't wanna hear it, I just want it to sit in the corner and do what it needs to do. And this fan will actually, unless you hit a certain threshold for power, the fans on this guy will stay off, which is what I want. Less heat, less fan noise to just power this guy and leave me alone. 
And last but the antithesis of least is this fractal design Define 7 case. This is supposedly a mid tower case, but it's incredibly modular and huge, way bigger than I actually needed and way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I really just needed the ability to store between six and 10 hard drives. This guy has room for up to 13 in this case. And the design of this case is exactly what I wanted. Just plain, black, unassuming. There's no clear glass panels, there's no RGB lights, there's nothing to make it stand out from the quarter that it's going to be sitting in. And I believe they sell a few different versions of this case. You can get ones that are white and gray or ones that have big glass panels on the side, but I don't care about that. I don't need to see what's running on the inside. But this case can be set up for giant water coolers or you can have 65 fans in here or 14 and a half graphics cards. I mean, I don't really know the full specs of this thing, but it's a big case and it can do a lot and be built for a lot of different purposes. And one of the awesome things about this case is how it just kind of pops open on all sides. Both the panels on the left and right side can just pop open. The front panel can just pop off so you can get to the fans and the dust filters. The whole top of the case can be removed for easy building of the PC. And this thing is supposed to be quiet. There's this sound dampening stuff on the panel. So like you can't even, like there's no, there's no ring of the metal. It just sounds super dampened, which is awesome. That's what I want. To help me with the build, I'll be using this iFixit toolkit, which will really come in handy for all of the different screws and whatnot that I need. So I guess there's nothing left but to build the thing. And yes, I did just put the power supply in upside down for two reasons. One, it's gonna be sitting on carpet. I don't need it trying to pull stuff up from the bottom and just clogging the filter on the bottom. And two, there's not gonna be a lot of heat in here anyway, so any additional suction it could provide to just draw heat through there or air through there should help out a little bit. All right, so I have a majority of the computer all set and ready to go. Before I go any further, I want to turn it on and see if it posts and make sure everything's okay before I do anything else. So I plugged in power, I plugged in a monitor, and now we are going to hit the power button and pray, I guess. All right, so we got fan noise, we're hitting something. Oops, one sec. Fans are on, computer's running. Do we get a screen? I can't see. As, hey, looks like we're posting. We're getting to the motherboard. So fantastic. I will go ahead and turn this off. I'm gonna finish cabling and wiring and I'm going to get Windows 11 installed. So it took a couple of days because of, well, unrelated reasons, but we're finally all set. I went ahead and installed Windows 11 on this machine with four eight terabyte Iron Wolf NAS drives. I used Windows storage spaces to create a two-way mirror with two columns, which essentially created a RAID 10 drive array. I cleaned up the cabling as much as I'm willing to clean up because again, there's no glass panels or RGB lights that I care about seeing, so it doesn't have to be perfect. The box will just sit nice and quiet in the corner and do what it's told. As far as the speed goes, I get pretty decent burst speeds over my 10 gigabit ethernet connection from my Mac with lower but still acceptable speeds for longer transfers. After transferring all of my data from my Synology to this new NAS and installing some apps to get me started like Plex or 4K video downloader and my backup software and a couple of other things, I'm now ready to use this as my primary storage and backup location and it feels pretty good. I went ahead and installed Hyper-V already, so I'll go through the process soon of spinning up some new VMs so I can test out different operating systems and software. But overall, this was a pretty standard build for me. I will say that I like the modularity of this Define 7 case and it looks good, but the process of moving the panel so I can get all the extra drives in there was a bit annoying and it did take longer than expected to do this build. I do think that my choice of parts for this build fits my needs for now and will allow me to grow over the next couple years until I get the itch to build another one. But if you're interested in seeing more about how I manage my backups both on site and to the cloud, let me know below. 
If you're looking for a simple and easy cloud backup solution at a great price, check out my video on backing up with Backblaze. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.